Hello guys, welcome to another Yusuko problem. Uh, you might see me wear this uh, goofy head headphones around my head right now, and I look like I look like a pilot or something. But the reason I we I'm wearing this is because I know the audio quality in the other Yusuko videos weren't good, and so that's why I'm wearing this just to test it out, test out the sound quality of this. Uh, this is also very cheap. I actually don't have I actually don't have a actual microphone so I have to use this one but anyways we're gonna do the 2017 December contest silver problem the bovine shuffle okay so convinced that happy cows generate more milk farmer John has installed a giant disco ball in his barn and plans to teach his cows to dance all right looking at popular cow dances farmer John decides to teach his cows the bovine shuffle the bovine shuffle consists of his end cows lining up in a row of some order and then performing successive shuffles, each of which potentially reorders the cows. To make it easier for his cows to lo locate themselves, Farmer John marks the locations for his line of cows with the positions 1 to N, the classic. And so the first cow in the lineup will be in position 1, next in position 2, blah blah blah. Okay, okay. A shuffle is described with n numbers where cow in position i moves to position ai during the shuffle okay so either each move to a position but the thing is uh unfortunately ais are not necessarily distinct so multiple cows might try to move to the same position okay which then they will move together all right so in our positions we can have multiple cows in one positions and then they just like keep moving and our job is to find the positions in uh, the lineup that always has a cow in it, no matter how many shuffles takes place. So I guess they're, they're saying like infinite shuffles. Um, what positions ha always has a cow? So let's jump right into the sample input. Right here, I've already drawn out the sample input. We can see over here, this means that cow in position 1 will move to position 3, uh, cow in position 2 will stay uh, stay where it is, and then in position 3 will move to 1, and then uh, 4 will move to 3. Okay, so I think it would be very helpful for us to draw a graph of this, so just to visualize it. So uh, we have position 1 over here, position 1 over here, and that's going to move to position 3, so we can draw an arrow and draw position 3. Okay. And then 2, it stays where it is. So 2, it stays where it is. Or it goes back to its own position. And then uh, 3 goes back to 1. So we can draw an arrow like this. And then three, and then 4 goes to 3. Okay. So 4 goes to 3. Alright. So looking at this, um, if we keep simulating this, if, if the cows keep shuffling in this manner, what positions will always have cows? Let me think about this logically. So if I were uh, cow one, I would I would start from here. I would start from here, and then the next move I would go to three, and then three it's gonna go back to one. So three is gonna go back to one and back here, and I just and I go to three again, and then three goes back to one. And I think if I'm cow one, I would just be keep cycling, like in this loop right here. Okay, cool. And I think the same goes for uh, cow 3. I think cow 3 is going to go to 1, and the 1 is going to go back to 3, and it's going to keep going. Okay, let's see. Okay, 2, 2, uh, this should be obvious. 2 stays where it is. So the position 2 is always going to have a cow. So that that, that is that is one of the good positions over here. So 2. So 2 is one of the positions that will always have a cow. And then one and three. Let, let's think. Of, let's think for a second. Will will one and three always have a cow? Yes, because one and three just keep alternating together. So, so first of all, so uh, in the beginning, one takes position one and three takes position three. Uh, cow one and cow three. And then when when the first shuffle begins, one goes to th uh, position three and three goes to position one. 1 goes to position 3, and 3 goes to position 1. After the shuffle, they're still in the positions. 
So no matter how many shuffles take place, it's always there. there it's always going to have a cow, because it is a cycle. Because it is a cycle. So one and three, they're always going to have cows. So there, we have three positions already. Now let's talk about four. What does four do? Well, four it goes it goes to three, right? And it just follows whatever, and it just follows this cycle over here. So it goes into the cycle, and it just follows the cycle. And so the cycle is obviously gonna always have cows in in it, but like four, it goes into the cycle, but nothing's going to four, right? No, nothing is going to four, and so that's why four is going to have no it's going to have no cows after the four goes into the cycle of one and three. Okay, that's cool. But w what if we have another cow here? What if we have a five that goes two, four? And what if we have like a six that goes two, five? And a seven that goes to five? What would, what would happen? What would happen now? You see, the five, although four has... Although the five can go to four, the four is gonna the four is gonna have cows uh, in like the first few shuffles, but at the end, there's nothing going for, there's nothing going to the six or to the seven because it is not a cycle. So if it's not a cycle over here, nothing none of this is a cycle. They're all at 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 a certain point in time, all of the cows, all of the cows over here. Is all going to advance into this one three cycle and keep cycling in here, and when it does that, all of all of these all of these positions are going to have no cows. And if we if we just do a little bit more examples, we can you, it it will be obvious. But like the main takeaway here is that whenever there is a cycle. In that cycle, there's always going to be cows because they start out with all cows in that cycle. And if they keep cycling, it's always going to be cows. But these positions over here, without the cycle or going to a cycle, they're not going to have cows at the end because all of them is going to go to a cycle such as this one. All right, now that we've established that whenever there is a cycle, um, the, the, the positions in the cycle is always going to have the cows. Now let's take a look at how how the graph of this actually sh looks like. Because what if we have like a double cycle? A double cycle, a cycle linked to a cycle? Or what if we have like a non-cycle, almost cycle going to a cycle, but then that cycle also going to this? There, and... um. People might be confused here because they don't know how to start uh, in detecting a cycle. But if we just look, but we just think logically and um, and look at what the graphs could potentially look like, we can get a better understanding of how we can achieve um, finding cycles. So in this one over here, as we've noted before, the one one three is a cycle. So one goes to three, and then three goes to one. And then we have this four over here that goes to three. And then we have a two going to itself. Okay. But now let me ask you a question. Can one can one position go to two other positions? No, that's not possible. Because every position over here, every position only has one number. You can't have you can't have one position that goes to that separates into two positions. Every position goes to only one other position. But let me ask you this. Can a lot of positions go into one position? Yes, it's said in the problem that multiple positions can go into one position, such as this three over here. This three over here. It has two positions going to three. But it only goes out. There's only one path out. So there's always going to be... So for each node, there's always going to be one path out and one or multiple path in or no path in and so in in these type of graphs if we just let's let's do a let's do a better example here so let's say we have a cycle over here we have a cycle now in this cycle 
right? We've already established this cycle, but each node in the cycle can't go to another thing, can't go to another position because that node has to follow the cycle. So it cannot go into, let's say, another cycle or another like half cycle or no cycle. It can't do that. It has to follow the cycle. And so if, if a node in the cycle cannot go to any other position except the next thing in the cycle, other nodes can go to uh, the node in the cycle. So if we have another no another node over here, it can go it can go to another node. It can go into the cycle over here. But as we discussed earlier, these nodes are going to run out of cows, and only the cycle over here, only this cycle over here, is going to keep cycling, and always have cows. And so these ones over here, let's say we can still have this like this because two two nodes can go into a um, two positions can go into one um, node and we can still we can have a lot of stuff over here and this looks like a lot of stuff but all of these all of these can be disregarded because all of them are going to go into this cycle over here and so when we draw our graphs it's gonna it's gonna look like this it's gonna look like a lot of nodes coming into a, a main cycle over here like these branches like this like this like this they're gonna come into this main cycle and only this cycle is gonna keep cycling only this cycle this part in white but we not only have this we don't we not only have this but we can have a lot of this in one input case we could have positions that don't relate to each other we can have another one let's say we have a two cycle over here and we, we can also have stuff going into here, stuff going into here, stuff going into here, stuff going into here, and just big branches like this, like that. We have multiple of these. There are going to be multiple of these. And all we have to do is detect how many, how many uh, positions are in the white over here that actually define a cycle. Okay. So how do we actually achieve this through code? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're we're just gonna go into each node and um, keep going to the next one until we did, until we find a node that we've already visited. So let let's say in the in this case over here, um, select a random node. Okay, let let's let's select this one over here. We start with this one because let's say it's node one or something. We we it doesn't really matter what which one we start with, but for this one, there's only one one position that's going out so it's going to go to this one and then it's going to go to this one and then it's in the cycle but we don't know we don't at this point we don't know because all we've visited is just these nodes right here we've never visited a thing that we already visited so we keep going we keep going we keep going we keep going and oh we have visited something that we've already visited before and notice how the thing that we've already visited before is in this yellow path over here so after we visit this, we can detect that there is a cycle. And so we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to say, okay, there's a cycle. And then we're going to visit everything here again. So we're going to keep cycling again, just to count how many are in this specific cycle. Notice we cannot count anything here because these are not in the cycle. So we have to go through this again and find how many are in the cycle. Okay, after this, we're done with this node. We can move on to any other node that's not um, been visited. And so let's say, let's say we visit, um, say over here. We go to the next one. Oh, it's visited. But is it a cycle? It's not a cycle because it, it, it's visiting um, this yellow path right here. If it visits itself, if it visits a green path, then yes, it is a cycle. But if it visits another path, then it's not a cycle. Okay, let's let's change to a new color right here. Let's go from here. Okay, from here, it's gonna go, 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 and it's gonna visit the yellow path again. If we if it visits any other path except itself, it's not a cycle. And it's just gonna keep looping over here, and all of these are not gonna be counted because it's gonna visit another path other than itself. But if you come here, let's do another example here. We come here and we do like let's say a node over here. It's gonna go in, okay, it's gonna come here. And it's going to keep going, it's going to keep going. Oh, we found a visited node. And the visited node is itself. 
it's it's pink we started with pink we ended with pink that means we have found a cycle and so we cycle through this again just to count how many how many specific nodes are in this cycle only notice we don't count this part and we add it to um, our final result and then we can just keep going we can just keep going let's say we go like here and then we find another thing and all oh, it's not our own path so this path is going to be be disregarded and at the end all we're gonna have is these two cycles over here all right let's take a look at the code very quick so we're gonna see uh, we're gonna get n over here and then um, we're gonna make a vector called 2 so that's just going to be um, uh, recording what what position each position goes to and so we're gonna see in this one and then we're going to minus one because um, in programming we start from zero instead of one so everything is going to be subtracted by one just to make it more clear and now we're going to start cycling so we're going to have um, a vector that's called visited and it's going to start with negative one first and the numbers in the visited array just means like the colors we have here so this yellow color it's going to be a certain number and then this green color is going to be a different number and because we track it using these numbers we know that if we're we know every time we find a visited if it's its own path or if it's someone else's path so that's that and then result is zero okay so now we're going to cycle through every cow and then we're going to say if it's if it's visited already that is not negative one so negative one is nothing but if it's visited, it's already marked before, we're going to continue because we've already seen that. And then we're going to say, so current is I. While visited, uh, current is still negative 1. So while it's not visited, we're going to we're gonna change our color or our visited to I. So we're just going to give it the ID over here. Give it uh, the color of the its node, its starting node. And then we're going to say current is to current. So that just basically advances to the next node. And it's going to do that until um, it reaches a, a node that is already visited. And so if if the visited, uh, if the if the node that's already visited is itself, and because, okay, so that's when like this yellow one, it cycles through, and then it finds a yellow one again. That means there's a cycle. And so, uh, it's our own cycle. Cycle it again and count each one. So we're gonna name another uh, variable called temp, and it's gonna uh, currently be, be um, the node that we ended on. And then we're gonna uh, do a do while loop, and we do do while loop because uh, the the temp is first equal to the current. And in the while loop here, we don't want the current to be the temp, so we're gonna do while loop. And um, first, we're just going to add one to the result because itself um, is a node. And then we're going to advance to the next node. And we're going to keep doing this. Um, if the visited, if the uh, thing we ended on is not I, so if it's not its own color, so it's like this green one over here, it goes and it's, it sees a color that it's not itself, uh, it's just going to do nothing. There's nothing to do because you're not adding anything and you've already marked everything as visited so you can just keep going to the next one over here and that should be it so overall this is a pretty straightforward problem and I think the main the main thing the main the key to this problem is just um, I mean like making input cases yourself and finding this pattern that there's always going to be a cycle and things that are coming into the cycle and if you can know this pattern then you're basically set and finding the cycle is just it's just common knowledge but you have to make uh, generalizations about the graphs that can be possibly made um, from this input case uh, yeah that's about it uh, leave in the comments below how you think the audio quality of this microphone was and I'll see you in the next Useful problem.